Right, so my question I have for you guys, thanks for supporting the petition too, is um, as, a, as an artist or as artists, and a lot of us here are creative people. Artist, yeah. yeah. This, okay. this is actually a problem. He's the creative genius. Yeah. We have this discussion okay. from time to time. <laughs> but as creative people, and a lot of us are here in the audience, do you guys ever hit that wall where maybe you feel like, oh, I, I hit this wall, I don't know if I, how to create more. Do you just get hit that wall? We hit that wall, wall every time. No, so what, what, I, I, I think it happens in the show. Like, we're only yeah. partially joking when we say this is the end of Penny Arcade. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're, it's pretty often that we'll sit down to write a comic and go, well, the last one was pretty good. Maybe we're done. <laughs> Just check out. Yeah. But it happens to everybody. I mean, it was last week, uh, Kurtz came into our office and said, well, Penny Ar <laughs> our PVP's over. <laughs> okay. You no, see, no. But it you know, happens. It, it reminds me of, of something that happens in Jane's talk. First of all, Jane's talk was great, right? Yeah, but it reminds me sort of the idea that you know you sort of get your friends, you wrap your friends up in your quest, you know, and creating something has all the you know it has all the the points that we want in a personal quest. You know what I mean? Like it has an obvious victory condition, it has an arduous struggle. I mean, it has everything's lined up, and um, I think that Mike and I are just lucky that we have each other. It keeps coming back, doesn't it? Well, because it is often the case that we feel like that's it. It's not gonna. We don't. That's it. That's all the JPEGs. We're we're, yeah. we're wrung out, and we have each other to rely on. And so, I mean, we have this obvious sort of dyad type situation. But I bet that you could. I bet in those situations. Is that like the half woman, half deer? No. <laughs> no, half tree. Mm. Anyway, some people know, and that's the main thing. But I, I think reaching out to what might be considered your party. Um, in those kinds of situations. I mean, that's, that's what we've done. Scott comes over when he has a problem. And um, just remember that, you know, we, we, it, at, the, at the end of the day, it's something that you create, but it's not, you know, it isn't in a vacuum that we're surrounded by people that we can ring out until they're completely empty and then throw yeah, them away. Yeah, in fact, uh, uh, there's Kiko. Yeah, there's Kiko. Hi, Kiko. Uh, Kiko's, Kiko's the one who can't poop anywhere but his house. <laughs> it's not me. Yeah, no, we just stole that. And, uh, and we use it. All the people around us, we just ring them out. We just change them out like light bulbs. They yeah. get burned out. They get, you know, they get cynical. They get angry. Bam. <laughs> it's Sparta. Bam. And then new guy. New guy. Oh, but I'm in a wheelchair. I can't kick anybody out. You need a robotic <laughs> leg. USB. Awesome. Bam. That was super funny. So very... So one, one last thing. Um, yeah. Leroy Jenkins. That's all, guys. Thanks a lot. See Thank you. you. I'm in a wheelchair. I can't kick anybody out. That's great. Hey, so uh, I was at PAX uh, Prime about six months ago. Yeah. Um, and so I were remember, we. Hey, we were at the enough, same show. We might have saw you. We were there, you may too. Have, I don't know. But um, I remember you referring to PAX uh, East as bitch PAX. Oh, no. And I was wondering if you could comment on that. You did say that. Did I? You really said that. Well, obviously it's not true. But, but you said it. No, I mean, have you seen this venue? It is a very nice venue. I actually think it's nicer than the Washington State Convention Center. Oh, no, no, there's no question. But this, why did you say those hurtful things? Yeah, I mean, I'm curious. <laughs> well, you have to understand, it's like when I go over there, it's like they're bearing in. It's like the zombies and they're knitted together and they're so, sort of... They scared me. Well, um, can, can you at least say something negative about PAX Prime that I can bring up? That's the just going to create the cycle. <laughs> <laughs> so <they're one. laughs> I um, love both PAXs equally. I could line, never you know choose. <laughs> PAX Prime is a den of thieves. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Are, 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 are we going to have this conversation again? Hopefully, yes. All right. It's like an evil version of the blue ball. <laughs> oh, hey. You gave me that great coin. Oh, yeah? What's up, man? Omendron. Jim Dark Magic. Oh, this is the some role-playing shit. The have decided on one thing, one word. That word, Omendron will find a salubrious balm to his soul. Mm -hmm. Dividends. Dividends. We have had your, our finest artisans, Liger from your very own merch booth, has made a chainmail lanyard for both of you. There's more than one. It's not like the, the Pac-Man watch. 
where you have to kill each other for it. A chainmail lanyard. Two of them with that a bangs off the hook. Commemorative coin. Uh, you may remember uh, uh, Mary Cagle. You might have seen her last week. She's uh, Scott's protege. She did the artwork for it. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. she's very talented. AQI up 19 points. How does that work for yeah. you? I like it. And then Paul Revere, one if by land, 52,290 if by packs. <laughs> <laughs> that is the best. <laughs> That's awesome. I also oh. have a box version if you don't want to, you know, like destroy your coin. Yeah. You know, it's medieval bling. Thank you very for much. For the modern nerd. I think and it's... also the Cookie Brigade has. Um, oh, is, the, is the Cookie Brigade in full effect? Oh, yeah. We have pins. Mm -hmm. These are special golden pins that we only give to Cookie Brigade actual members. And there's oh. one for each of you <gasps> commemorating. But I've made no cookies. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, is that good for a certain number of cookies? Like if I. <laughs> You, yeah, you could turn I only consume from, the like, cookies. Loads of cookies. Well, these are obviously these are incredible treasures. gifts. You can place them upon our altar. <laughs> man, oh man. Thank you very much. What a treasure. Wow. Well, I'm going to try to install this while I answer Let's this go over next here. question. Hey guys, my name's Caleb. Uh, Hi, last Cal. year, I won the Omegathon with. Uh, you did. <laughs> did you have fun? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Take note of that future Semi Omegathon. Fun. Uh, it was it was great. It was unbelievable. I wanted to thank you guys for uh, giving me that opportunity and. Well, thank uh, you for letting us torment you for three days. In exchange, <laughs> oh. the, the trip to Germany was really nice. Okay, good, good. Um, so I wanted to thank you guys for that. And Dan, who's not here, also wanted to thank you. Uh, and then I wanted to ask, you guys talked about Fury of Dracula and Arkham Horror. Oh, like, some cooperative board games, yeah. One time, in, way in the past. Uh, I just was wondering if you guys are playing any other board games or if that's something you're doing yeah. other than just your D&D stuff? Or if I've been playing a bunch recently, actually. Some really good stuff. Um, if you're looking for another sort of cooperative board game, um, what's the zombie one called? Last Night on Earth. Thank you. <laughs> Last Night on Earth is incredible. Uh, it basically plays out like a pulp zombie movie where you are the actors. Like someone plays the sheriff's son, someone plays the cheerleader. It's really great. <laughs> Um, we That's also on my played. Shelf. I haven't played it yet, but it's on yeah. my shelf. Yeah, it's good. The other one that I thought was really fun was uh, I think it's called Mystery Express, which is basically it's like, like super, super clue. clue. Like they didn't think that Clue gave you enough shit to worry about, <laughs> uh, and so they had. Now you have to know who it was, where they did it, why they like, what their motivation was, what time they did it. I mean, it's cool. Uh, definitely recommend it if you want to go crazy. Right. Yeah, I've been I've been doing more. Um, I have a I have a, a shelf full of co-op games like Shadows Over Camelot and you know just tons and tons of stuff like that. But um, I've been getting more into competitive games. Keek and I have been playing. Uh, there's a game called Yomi. Have you ever heard of that? Yep. Yeah, that's really neat. So basically, it's like a it, it's like a poker deck, but it's customized ten different ways, and each of these ten different ways is like a fighting game character. And so you're playing. It, it basically, it's basically a deck game where you play fighting characters and you you dish up a, a like a full combat like you would in the arcade but it's 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 so clever the way it's put together and the way it's paced is super fast um we also been playing ascension which is great if you chronicle played of that. the god slayer yeah, yeah specifically the chronicle of the god slayer but but it's it's masterful it's definitely something you should check out have you played any mansions of madness i haven't i just saw it here in their booth and i, I my first reaction was i have to buy that but i was like well i have to take it on the plane um, but I will get it, definitely. No, no, I mean, this is, this is easily, like, our schedules are as wide as they've ever been at this show, so I think we'll actually be able to attend maybe 40% of PAX. Yeah. So you will see us down there. Thanks, Tabletop is vast, as, a, as you might have seen. So, thanks. Thank see you, man. Hi. Um, Hi. Last year, during the second panel, one of the uh, international attendees came and brought you something and you jokingly said this is going to be a tradition isn't it oh it's a tradition now 
All right, he's reaching into his pack. I wanted to get you Ebola, but I decided, why be a dick? Here's some penicillin to call that stuff. Uh, stuffed penicillin? I only have one, though, so you're going to have to fight for it. Rock, paper, scissors! Fair enough. Okay, easily done. It's just it's to warn the disease off. It's like I'm not gonna go over there. <laughs> Two quick questions. Two quick One. answers. All right, Mike. Yes. Next year, do you think we could see something to the effect of coup? You could challenge him to a game of ping pong and for Me? like donate. Well, no, anyone who like any oh. audience could challenge him for like ten, twenty dollars, and all proceeds go to child's play. That's really kind of a cool that. idea. Yeah, we've yeah. done, we done like a charity poker tournament, but that sounds. That sounds marvelous. Yeah, that would be. That's a good idea. It would be real fast. I mean, like bam, bam, bam. Yeah, bam. yeah, no, it would no. be very fast. Coup, coup is a is like a human threshing machine. Yeah, yeah. like just a moist fluid comes out the other side. Um, you had two questions though. All right, second one, Jerry. Yeah. Right. Look at Mike. Now back to me. Now back at Mike. Now back to me. I'm not Mike. I have no goatee. Now back at Mike again. Now back to me. I have fan art for you. Will oh. you accept it? Yes. Yes. <laughs> well played. What a treasure. What is it, it? This is not PAX. This is not fan art for Penny Arcade. This is actually PAX fan art, you guys. This is amazing. Oh, everybody's here. Here, look at this. Oh, here. Is there a, is there a camera? Yeah, point, hold it up. Here, take a look at this, fan. Well played, yeah. Looking here. good. Getting better. Oh, those guys are not hooked up to the other thing. Hi. Yeah, it, it, it has like, do you guys remember that scary witch that was at PAX East last year? For God's oh, yeah. sake, hold it still. Jesus. Oh. <laughs> See, it's got witches, it's got all the bands. Jason. It's, it's a mem machine. I love the anime Robert. Yeah, that's awesome. Thanks a lot. Hey, guys. Hey. Um, well, uh, thank you and congratulations for moving this to a bigger venue because oh. this place is awesome. I wish, yeah, I wish that we could have been here the first year, but we didn't know, you know. In fact, can we install a bridge here and strap a, you know, a hyperdrive on the back and just kind of fly this place out of here? You know, it would be pretty cool to have it back uh, on the West Coast, yeah. <laughs> um, so my actual question is, uh, a few months ago we took a vote on a couple of comics, uh, a couple of, of new storylines you guys had thought up. Yeah. And uh, my, my specific question is, where my Belle Ruelle at? Uh, I can do it in a heartbeat. I mean, but she lost, I think. She lost. Well, I know she lost, but... Hey, but no, last, near, time, near, the last time they all ended up getting made yeah. anyway. Yeah. Yeah, I can tell that story, but it's like, what I'm trying to figure out, I'm trying to figure out if the best way to tell that story is to, is to kick out this, is to kick out a comic set with Mike, or if I should do what I always meant to do, which is do an album. I know that's weird. Is that weird? No. Uh, yeah, I have about half the songs written for an album about that story. And I feel like, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like that would be just as fun. Maybe I can get cover art. Probably not. He's, yeah, he's, <laughs> he's very busy, you know what I mean? Like, I don't, wanna, I don't wanna push him, but if you wanna know more about that stuff, I, that, that definitely encourages me to, yeah, oh, to definitely. pick and strum. Yep. Uh, can we... Can we say the Lookouts thing, though? I mean, that's a real thing, right? No? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, it got um, the press releases coming out. Yeah. yeah, I think so. But speaking of those sort of fun projects, people have been wondering when they were going to see more Lookouts content. Mm -hmm. And we actually just announced uh, a deal with Cryptozoic Games. Speaking of cooperative board games. Actually. Yeah, speaking of cooperative board games, uh, Cryptozoic is doing an incredible uh, cooperative Lookouts game where you play as a Lookout, earn merit badges, play adventures. <laughs> You, I mean, you, you played it, I had to watch Ronya, but you actually did a beta test of the yeah, game, right? Yeah, I, I played it, and it's, yeah, I mean, it's a lot of the things that you probably, if you played Castle Ravenloft, sort of like, 
tile building, except that you play as a character who progresses through a campaign. So it's a really great hybrid of, of both. Um, yeah, so I was super excited for that. Yeah, that's going to be hot. Thanks, Thanks man. man. I'll pick and surround. When I'm home, I'll, I'll imagine your face beaming. Uh, hi, uh, I'm Australian. This is my first pack, so I'm very excited. Uh, oh, welcome aboard. Uh, so this one's much easier to get to. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah. you know, 24 hours or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've got a question for Mike. I've always been curious. I know you posted when you've got your Pac-Man tattoo that, hey, look, cool Pac-Man tattoo. Yeah. I know you've got a couple others. I was wondering what they were and if there was a story behind them. Uh, yeah, I think, that, uh, I think that tattoos should have stories behind them. Um, so I definitely have Pac-Man. Uh, <laughs> I don't have, no. Uh, cool. This side is um, for me and my Gabe, my first son. So I was born in the year of the snake, and he was born in the year of the monkey. And so that represents him and I. Uh, and then my new yeah. son, Noah, is year of the dragon. Mm -hmm. No, year of the tiger. So I've got more arm, I guess. <laughs> Uh, and then I have a horrible tattoo on my leg that was like the first tattoo you get, and then you immediately regret it, but you have to get that one. Um, and I don't want to talk about that. Okay, it's a heart Shut up. that has um, Shut up. thorns and barbed wire around it. I'm sorry. <laughs> they got progressively better. <laughs> There's an upward progression. Yeah. Uh, hey, guys. Uh, I remember reading a quote from you guys. You had written that the very first pack sold around 100, I mean, 1,337 It, it pre-sold literally to the number 1337. Yeah. Yeah. And you guys said that that was a divine it's sign. It's like an omen, yeah. Yeah. yeah that, and I wanted to ask you, what do the gods of gaming look like? Did you speak to them? What are their names? And what message did they ask you to bring to us today? It's a, it's a presence, I guess. I don't know. I'm uncomfortable with that concept. <laughs> Deliver the message. Well, no, but it's, if I'm an atheist, like, do I believe in the gaming gods? You see what I'm saying? Yeah. They're pretty cool. Yeah. We hung out for a while. Yeah. We went to the Space Needle. They were, they were only in for a day. We did all the tourist shit. Uh, awesome. All right, thanks, guys. I gotta head over to Megaton. Enjoy. Ah, uh, uh, hello. Hi. Hi. Um, first, I just a proto man enthusiast, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Um, first, I'm gonna say, Adam James, I know you're out there. They totally plugged Ascension over Dominion. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, this question: uh, Do you know who George R. R. Martin is? Yeah. Okay. So um, I think there's actually five R's. I think it's George R. 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 Martin, right? Um, okay. So my question would be, George R. R. Martin has a very interesting relationship with this fandom, to say the True. least. True. And um, while this is, like, I've been reading, the, oh boy. <laughs> See? Right, right there. Um, and so I've seen a lot of very different opinions on the way he goes about, you know, his books, his writing, his blog, et cetera, his relationship with his fans. And as a writer, um, I would like to find out your, your thoughts on his relationship with his fandom. I don't write. <laughs> it's like I don't want to. I don't want to give away any of our secrets. You know, all writers, as you as you are aware, have entered into a kind of tacit fraternity. Yeah. Get my invitation. I have the book. Um, I think that. That is actually a really great question. We should hang out. <laughs> if you have any more awesome questions, we can oh, talk about this all night. <laughs> no, what I'm saying is that being a writer, especially being a, as soon as you shift over into like a public persona, it's very strange. I mean, it's very, very strange. And I think that, I think that we're lucky in that, you know, we all sort of have a, we have a shared reference point of, of gaming. We have a shared culture, even if we experience it in an asynchronous way. So we've had a lot of experiences, even though they happen to be digital. And that gives us a much, that gives us a, a firm grounding. If, we, if I was to see you on the show floor and exhibition, we would be able to carry on a conversation. We, you know, we already have a lot of the background that it's okay to make, you know, that makes us <laughs> friends or <Cool>. proto friends, <laughs> right? Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Um, and I'm not sure that that's as true. And also, you know, I'm used to meeting people and talking to them about it. You know, he does, he does, he writes in his cave or whatever. 
and then the book comes out. But I mean, we create work for you every other day. You know what I mean? Our relationship is much more synchronized than it is when you put out a book and then you deal with all the fallout from that and then you put on the book. It, it, creates, it creates a disequilibrium, I think, between the two parties. Yeah, I mean, if you, th if you think that the comic on Monday was shitty, you only have to wait till Wednesday. <laughs> Maybe that one will be good. No you six know. years, Aww. right? Um, and I, I think that that's what allows the difference. But I mean, also, so he has to deal with that psychic avalanche and then he has to immediately sit back down at a typewriter and say, okay, now I need to make something else for these people, right? Ooh, I mean, yeah. he's in a completely different situation, I think. Okay, fair, fair enough. Thank you. you. You are Dr. Light. Oh, Rock thank on. you. <laughs> I, I do my best. That is actually really sweet. If you get the whole metaphor. <laughs> Hi, it's, uh, I'm Jason, or Decius is known to many of my friends. Hello. Um, you may Hi. remember me from PAX. 2010. You might remember me from such packs as, as 2010. Yes, exactly. I only have one, though, <laughs> okay. so. Um, in what seems to be turning into a tithing hour, I actually have an offering for Jerry, and then Ooh. I have a question on then behalf a of a boot. friend. <laughs> okay. Um, I found out that you rather like uh, Caramel at the Draw Comic in 2010. Are there people who don't? Is he the only one that doesn't like Caramel on this stage? <laughs> If you want to share, well, he's these. the only one who gets caramel. Let's yeah. let's be specific about that. Excuse, excuse my voice. I was on the pub crawl last uh, night. It's sultry. I like. <laughs> it. If you want to share these, you can. But no. this is specifically for Jerry, as he's expressed. Yeah. I exactly. like these eighteen caramel bars Jesus. from the Great White North. <laughs> All right, and and a bonus chocolate, a car a, a coffee crisp. Wow, this I, is the I only have package. a few. Well, I'll take it, All right. and I'll eat it. Thank you. Oh, is there another candy? No, I'm just wondering, my friend wants to know if she can storm the stage and offer high fives. Yeah, yeah double, we can double, double high, high five. five. Yeah. Storm, storm this motherfucker. <laughs> no, you hit my... You hit, no, that's okay. Here, let's bring it down. And, yeah. It's the, a lot it was of the grip five. I like that. What? Copy, Chris. What? Do you have anything to add? Oh. Oh, I do. Interesting. Anything to uh, heat? <laughs> uh, my name is Steve. This is my first pack. Hi, Steve. And, uh, Hello, day. Steve. Um, now, I happen to be a huge coffee enthusiast, and I... Really? I roast in my parents' garage. I do a similar thing, except it's not my parents' garage, it's my garage. Yeah, I, I'm working on that one. Yeah. Uh, I gotta go to grad school first and you know, get a job or something. You'll get there. Yeah, so uh, I happen to have a half a pound of a Rwanda. He does uh, have stuff to give to us. <laughs> and the very, very stupid question is, would you like it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. I just gotta, here, listen, let's talk about the Baymore 1600 uh, home drum roaster. <laughs> It really is incredible. Oh, yeah? Well, I think you just made a love connection. <laughs> Thank you very much. He didn't know what to say. I that never like, happened. No, I just, I just looked upon his face. You know, your wife's not in town. <laughs> oh, man, that's perfect. Oh, just up to second crack. Hi, uh, my name is Glenn, and greetings from New Hampshire, the home state of Jim Dark Magic. Yes, the New Hampshire Jim Dark Magic. That's right. I appreciate you guys having the convention this close. Yes. Because uh, I don't fly well. Now, I, I did get here last year. It was my first really, really huge convention, and it was my first time kind of returning to geekdom after spending 15 years being an asshole to the people who were my friends when I was a kid. This happens. <laughs> it happens. Um, and at that PAX, I got to meet uh, met some of the Knights of Arcadia who I gilded with in WoW. Nice. And it re-inspired me to get back into Dungeons and Dragons after hearing you guys having so mu yeah. much fun playing. And I've been carrying yeah. on a over the internet game with people spread out across oh, this nice. country. Oh, With Skype or? Yeah, we use Skype, we use map tools and things like that. And nice. some of them made it back here this year. Some of them couldn't because of job issues and things like that. The universe. Um, yeah, it happened. And now tomorrow, they're set to finish uh, the heroic tier and get to Paragon. 
And although I don't have a gift, I would like to invite you to come and kill them all. <laughs> oh. <laughs> if you have an hour or so to do that. So you guys, so you're, you're, you're crazy. I can kill a party in less than no. an hour, please. <laughs> all right. So he I is have an the hour. TPK. Yeah. That's his signature maneuver. No, they oh, were all oh. warned. They knew that if this were to go down, um, I wouldn't give a shit if they all died. So I'm saying, so you, you got your digital crew, like you got everybody together to play. I got three or four of them here, two who can possibly get on on Skype, and the rest of them I'm just going to give their characters to strangers. I love this show. <laughs> I love this show. Jesus. Yeah, that's awesome. I, what time is it? I, I don't know. I, this is the whole oh. point was to ask you and find out when you guys had time to afternoon, kill you're pretty open, right? Yeah, I mean, my schedule actually this year is pretty cool. I can be in tabletop quite a bit. Um, okay. We'll talk. Awesome. Call me. Uh, Over here. Okay. <laughs> Hi, my name's Chris. Hi, Chris. Uh, it was my first PAX. I flew over from South Korea for this, and wow. it's already been life changing. Yeah. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you, guys. This is amazing. Uh, I just had it's kind of a dumb question now. I mean, being like 11, 12 years into what you guys are doing, but um, when I first started reading Penny Arcade, my friend got me into it, um, and it just really spoke to where I was as a gamer, and yeah. just. Um, but as, I noticed, like, reading it it kind of seemed like you guys found exactly what to say to your audience right off, like right off the bat. And I was just wondering, um, how do you strike the balance between being or dealing with pretty specific content and being able to apply it to like hundreds of thousands of people? Uh, yeah, what's the creative process? Well, like? I mean, if that was a process, like if that was something that we were intellectually doing, that would be <laughs> alchemy. <laughs> I mean, yeah. you would have, you could be impressed with me and I would accept it. <laughs> that's, that's not what's happening. What, it's actually the reverse. What happened is that we were the sort of person who would have attended PAX if it had existed. It's actually the, it's the complete opposite. So when we make comics that speak to you and seem true, we're really just amusing ourselves. And Sorry. we're... we're <laughs> And we're lucky that, you know, the, this universe of people we imagine, this universe of people who have these shared experiences, even though they have them independently, we're lucky that that is true. And you know, if, you, if you watch PATV at all, whenever you see, like, the fourth panel episodes and we're writing a strip, the only thing I'm trying to do is make him laugh. And you the know? only thing I'm trying to do is get him to laugh, right? Or just type out the funny things that he says. And that's, and that's it. <laughs> I mean, that, that really is just like, just like if you're, you know, you're hanging out with your people and, you know, you, you know that you can get him. You know that you have that, you have that joke that always works with him. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, yeah. we're, just, we're just having fun. And I think that the fact that it is still fun for us, I think that some of that sort of gets baked into the JPEG somehow. I don't, I'm not a scientist. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how that works. But I know that there is fun and JPEGs in close proximity. <laughs> However it works, man, you guys are masters at it. So um, thank, you. thank you so much for this. Thank you. thank you very much. Have fun. Great oh, cosplay. Oh, oh, here, here, real, real quick. In the dark. Um, for the PAX price, what Robert said oh. in his inimitable Robert fashion is eight figures. <laughs> wow. And I didn't know that either. That actually That's makes terrifying. me... We, we need to... Every, Did we pay for that? No, we need a material every Jesus time, every Christ. joke. Wow. Yeah, exactly. I need to step it up. I don't even know it went up to eight figures. What is, I know six figures is a thing. Yeah, yeah. What just, is eight? You just add more, just two more figures. Okay. <laughs> Which Sorry. It's, it's your turn now. We apologize. Oh, Thank you, gentlemen. Um, I had a hypothetical question for mm -hmm. you. But you even have the red shoes. I mean, you didn't just like go for the shirt. I wear this every day. What? <laughs> <laughs> this is normal S. <laughs> um, I came from the internet. And, no, uh, I was vacationing in uh, Seattle a couple of couple of weeks ago. Yeah. And um, do you guys frequent Blue Moon Burgers? Oh, all the yeah. time. Um, that place is great. It's right by our office. Hypothetical question: 
If I'm in the corner of Blue Moon Burgers and I see the entire staff of Penny Arcade hanging out, eating burgers, what is your preferred uh, crazy fandom <laughs> way to... <laughs> I didn't interact with you, I'm sorry. Um, it's okay. But if you were to, uh, what's your preferred method of a, uh, a fan coming up and saying, oh God, I love your work, you know, you, you don't want that in the middle mind of that. a burger. I think there are weirder ones actually. Here, hold on a second. I have a, I have a, this, tell me if you think this is a weird text message. Or no, this was a Twitter. Uh, I was the one who scanned your ticket at airport security. Yeah. And, and he got randomly picked for the strip search. I got incredible pat down. I thought he was just being friendly. Turns out he was a fan. <laughs> no, I mean, if you just walk over and say, uh, I really like the comic strip. And then you, run away. And yeah, and, and scurry back. I like it! Uh, that's nice. We like that. No, that's, that's okay. Cool. It, it's, it's okay to like it. We, we want you to like it. I, yeah. I really like it. Well, thank you. <laughs> that's it. We, we did it. We had the experience. It's spectacular. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. All right. Now that we've had this massive swarm of thumb wrestling, yeah. uh, what's your preferred gesture for people who don't want to touch other people? Oh, we, have we, the iron we, cross. Can, we can demonstrate it for you. It's the Iron Cross. So it's still the same thing from... Right there? Or... So it's Very still safe. the same thing from last Incredibly year. Incredibly safe. safe. No diseases okay. that way. Thank you. No sweat. Hi, guys. I was uh, here last year, and I asked you about uh, video podcasting for Acquisitions Incorporated. And I really loved what you guys did at PAX Prime. That was, uh, that, that was, was fun so one. fun. It was cool. But there was like a big performance aspect to yeah. it that kind of lost the, the intimacy of a bunch of friends just kind of sitting around sure, the table sure, playing. Sure, sure, sure. And also had like voting for the... The voting was cool. Yeah, yeah. I, I did like the voting, but I was wondering if there was any plans to do any more video podcasting kind of stuff for Acquisitions Incorporated. Well, Adventures. the thing that, that you need to understand about Acquisitions Inc. is that is Wizards of the Coast call. We don't get to say, hey, let's play D and D for you. They have to, they come to us and tell us it's time to do another acquisitions inc. And the last I heard from them is that they did not want to do any more of those podcasts. Uh, so, I don't know. Maybe we have to take it over or I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe maybe we'll just do it. I don't know. It was too much fun not to do. And now we and now we have Pat Rothfuss on board. So Yeah. As a as a quick follow up then where do we send the protest letters? Uh, I guess you can mail, yeah, I mean, if you want to see more Acquisitions, Inc., Twitter them or mail them. I mean, because we're ready to play D&D. Okay. I can <laughs> do that at a moment's notice. At a moment's notice. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Yeah. Hi, I'm Ray from Canada. Hi, Hi Ray from Canada. Oh, oh that Ray. <laughs> After a South African and uh, Australian, it's, you know, it's almost like I'm walking we're across triangulating. the border or something. So... About 10 years ago, you came out with... Boot. <laughs> Listen, he warned us. About 10 years ago, you came out with this book. It's true. And it was my first internet purchase as a 19-year-old. Oh, wow. It, it, you ushered exactly in... It was weird to use your credit card online. I know. <laughs> so after I purchased it, it was a while, and then it came to me. I read it, and it was fantastic many times you know, yeah. reading it. Thank you very much. And then the scandal came out. Very obvious. You, we all know how you felt about it. We have those occasionally. Yes. Uh, lots of swearing involved, I presume. Yeah. Um, lawsuits. The question I have for you is wh what type of learning have you had out of your experience? And of course, as a business person, I'm deeply ashamed also as a human being what happened to you. Uh, what advice would you give to a person who's writing contracts or doing business in general? Uh, dealing find with a business types person. Of yeah, find someone like yourself. It's yeah. like Pokemon. Yeah, capture a business person. Capture a business person, <laughs> level them up, Yeah. and then throw them. Then when someone comes to you with a book deal, completely dis as a creative person, completely disengage yourself from the process. You have nothing to offer. You will only fuck it up. No, this, this is our experience. Sure. I, mean, well, I mean, look at it. Let you us know. save you tens of thousands of dollars. <laughs> Think about no what business. we did before Robert. The book is probably the best fuck-up we had. It was, it's fantastic. We There's sold the company accidentally. <laughs> Do you see what I mean? It's fantastic. 
there is the, every member like this. Yeah. This this freaked out my mom. Explicit <laughs> comics. We made that symbol and, up. And it's it an Asian mom binding. we're talking about, so yeah. this is particularly bad. Yeah, yeah. yeah but, find but no, a business person. As They're a creative, out there. as a creative person, you get the offer. I mean, even if you don't have a business, even if you haven't captured a business person yet, it is it is worth it to have a lawyer look at any document because it's so exciting. When, so, when someone comes up to you, and listen, they rely on this, okay? When someone comes up to you and says, yes, it's all true. You are the person you imagined you could be. You can pay your rent making art. No, it's true, I can make that happen for you. You stop listening after a while. You know what I mean? You just ask them where to sign. You just say, where's my pen at? Where the line at? Let's get this done. Do, do you see what I'm saying? That's why you have to completely disengage from that thing altogether and let smart people do it. <laughs> and, and, and well, thankfully, I do have a pen. Would you mind signing the book? Yes. Yeah. You, Wait, you mind? Right? No, we or... don't mind. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> yes. In fact, we unmind. Actually, it's the opposite. Here, over here. Um, Koo put out a survey a little while back, um, asking whether you were going to have where, where people were interested in the Pax Europe and there was oh, various. Do you want to yeah. go to London, etc.? I'm putting in the bid for Scotland here. <laughs> this, if the camera can see it, this is Iron Brew. It is the Scottish national drink, right? It outsells Coke three to one in Scotland, right? <laughs> yes, it does. Um, it's addictive. We're giving you the first taste for free. If you want more, you have to come and get it. <laughs> Say the name of it again. Iron Brew. Iron Brew? Yeah. Iron Brew. But it's spelled <laughs> Iron Brew? <laughs> it's I R N B R U. What is it like citrusy? Is it I'm just listen, I'll figure it out. <laughs> no, I got I have it under control. All right, smells smells like orange cream soda. I think it's really good. It tastes like a creamsicle. I'm gonna have to keep drinking it to see if I like it. Oh, I think it's great. You, you remember those little, uh, the little ice creams that had the wooden spoon? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It tastes like that, but carbonated. No, this tastes like the stick. No, it doesn't. <laughs> There's a chalky, <laughs> vaguely orangian sense. I think it's good. Yeah. <laughs> so, I'm going way out on a limb here, but I hope people in the audience might back me up. Are you watching My Little Pony Friendship is Magic? Wow. And if so, who is your favorite My Little Pony? What? <laughs> My Little Pony got a reboot recently, and it's, it's pretty good. Are they still ponies? Yeah, they're still ponies. Did they, did they turn into cars? <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I have not seen it yet. It's on my DVR. <laughs> That's all. Hi, my Hello. name is Parker. Hi, Parker. Um, I didn't come from somewhere foreign, or um, <laughs> I don't have any gifts either, but all of my friends okay. came from Florida and were really excited to be here. And here's the obligatory 30 second word vomit. Uh, I'm an English major and a writer, and writing is really important to me. And I read your comic three times a week, every week, like clockwork. Thank you. And it's funny, and it's eloquent, and at times it's so profound. All the news posts. And it's and drawn well. <laughs> and it's drawn very well. Thank you. Right. That was really nice of you it. to say no, that. No, I doodle. No, I doodle that was, I appreciate your, it. I mean it, though. I thank doodle you. all of your comics in the margins of my yeah. notebooks. Oh, thank, thank you. you. My teachers really appreciate it. Um, but I really loved the rain slick lore. And oh, really? I've read it so many times. Thank it's you embarrassing. so much. And I thought it was so eloquent and so profound, and it, I just wanted to tell you that it makes me want to write. It inspires me as a writer. Mike, I'm really sorry. I'm not no, trying okay. to single you out here. Take as much I'm time really, as you need. I'm so sorry. No. Never get tired of this. I, I no. But I wanted to 
ask, um, what what inspired that? What makes you do it? And is there any more coming? Because my Tuesdays are lonely. Yeah. Um, gosh, I'm so glad. I mean, I felt like such a. I didn't. I did not think I could accomplish that. I mean. Really. Really. Like when I started out, I expected that it was not going to go. <laughs> Do you want me to start drinking? Do you I want to like an your, asshole now. Do you want your really stick sorry. soda? Like, no. No, I mean, I, d I did not think, I mean, I wrote it, like, to prove. See, I can't take pleasure in my own success. I will not allow it. The one time I write something that does not have an art accompaniment, do you see what I get? Do you see what's happening here? It's all right. Anyway, um, it was incredibly hard. Every time I had to write that, it was incredibly hard. And some days it didn't get up until Wednesday because I was having some kind of existential crisis. Yeah, I, I know how it's just, sometimes the words don't come and the way that you've put them together, it's really wonderful. Oh, thank you. And can I be a super girl and ask you guys for a hug, please? Sure, okay. Thank you. You should go first. Supergirl tends to fly. I, that's fine. She's proposing to roll. All right. Problem solved. Worship concluded. Now we can move on. Hi, um, this is probably my seventh PAX, I think. Yeah, wow. um, thank you. I'd like to think that I've been to every convention center you've been at, so. <laughs> um, but last year we came, me and my bud buddies came from Georgia. We drove up again this year. Um, and we, I, actually last year I asked if you would make a PAX South, but that was a bad idea um, <laughs> because Geeks melt in the heat. Um, <laughs> it's, the humi it's actually the humidity. Yeah, that too. Um, but I think after so much hard work, I think you guys should have a vacation, but take us with you and do, <laughs> do, do a, a PAX cruise. You know what? You think? We've had that fantasy. <laughs> but we thought it was so crazy. Like, we thought that was just a, like a ridiculous thing to do. Yeah. And then also, we had this, we have to, you have to understand, like, we never expect anything that we do to actually work. And I think that as soon as Robert was talking about a cruise, I think we just pictured me, him, and Robert alone <laughs> on a boat. I'm sorry, but, I mean, the song started to play in my head, and then... I just, for my part, I pictured, you know, we would set it up, there'd be an incredible land area, you know, it'd basically be like packs on the water, and then we would pull into these incredible... Sea packs. Yeah. <laughs> We would, we would pull into these incredible Caribbean ports and no one would leave the boat. <laughs> like, white sand beaches, does, doesn't matter. No. Nope. It's good. I don't know what is wrong with you. Right. That, that I've seen it. you eat, it. like, a bag of chips that were open in the office for two years. They well, were chewy. They had, yeah, chewy ranch. That's not a real flavor. That's not a flavor. That's old. That's an old yeah, chip. Yeah. It's like a Charleston chew, but no. ranch. It's not a real thing. Um, yeah, is it a cruise, you think? A cruise, I think everyone would go. Yeah, I mean, I know, because I know that, because Jonathan Colton did one, and everybody came off of that like it was a, like a supernatural experience. You know what I mean? Like, maybe we should just get that boat and, you know, do get that motherfucker. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk to Robert. Uh, hey, I'm Neil. Hi, Neil. Hi, Neil. Um, I'm part of Parker's Entourage from Florida. Hi. Okay. Um, I first off just wanted to say thank you for everything you guys have done, for the posts, for the drawings. Oh. I'm trying to be like you. Our pleasure. That I can draw and I can't, but I'm trying. See, I can't draw either. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I can't just write either, though. Hitch oh. your wagon oh. to an artist. Yeah, I'm an actor, though. Um, I'm trying that. Yeah. And one question that I wanted to ask you was... Um, on the PATVs, you know, after packs, you're always real jittery and you don't yes. know what to do and you often look at the camera and it's just like, uh. Yeah. Have you found anything after I've been on set for all day or after I've um, been filming for like 
a ridiculous amount of time or just a long weekend of a stage play, anything. Yeah. We break down the set, we clean up, we do what we do, and then we go to Village Inn and have pie. And that's a great way to pie. Yeah, we good. need to ritualize it. I mean, I think we need to ritualize that come down process. You know, I was talking to Jane backstage and I was like, I need your help, you know, gamifying the stress I have at these shows. Like, I never, I never get used to it. I want to think that it's true. I want to think that I've got it every time, but I don't. And um, so we talked about some, some different systems, but you have a place that you go and you can get there and then the pie is present. <laughs> Pretty much anywhere that has pie. We had a village in closed down near us, so we went over to IHOP and they have pie and pancakes. Well, there you go. Which is a bonus, really. Yeah, I, I think we probably need a ritualized way to come yeah. down off of it, because it's just sort of like just jumping around, like just this, all this energy is bottled up, you know? <laughs> we'll find you one, we'll buy <laughs> We'll get man. you some pie. <laughs> You got pie. Yeah, thank you. I need to. I need to think about that more. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. Hello, Mike and Jerry. I'm Hi. Dan. Hi, Dan. Um, you're no. Uh, you're used to. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm very nervous. It's okay. Um, so are we. <laughs> you're no stranger to addressing taboo and off-the-topic subjects such as medications and stuff oh, like sure. that. And this is more for Jerry. Have you ever thought about more addressing uh, being a non-Christian? It's I'm agnostic in Arkansas, and being in the, being in the Bible Belt, it is very hard and and very ostracizing uh, to be pointed out and centered out like that. And I just wondered if you've ever thought about addressing that in the if, post. Man, if, if, I thought, if I thought that I could address it in a way that wasn't incredibly Insulting. Offensive. I, I have to like bite my tongue to not offend people. No, I mean the yeah, challenge. The challenge I have is at home is is trying to explain the world to Elliot without giving him any, with, without, without actively discouraging him from exploring that world. He wants to know about the Bible, and so I tell him Bible stories because I'm, you know, I was a Christian for many years. I know all about that stuff, and then he's just like, really, a fish? <laughs> a fish ate? A guy, <laughs> and I was like, "Well, some you know, some people do believe that." He's like, "But it's not real, right?" It's like, <laughs> "I don't know." It's like that's you don't want to say that to a child, but yeah, yeah, I don't I know just... anything, son. Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> and you have done it to a certain extent with the Jesus shirts and other, oh yeah, other, other comics like that. I mean, I, I try to do it, but I mean, it's it's really it's it's so it's so personal, and it's hard to it's hard to express that that you know ethos without making it the antithesis of something when it's i think if i could do anything it would be try to try to express that it is its own state of belief and it isn't a reaction it is actually just a way of being that is a way oh, and even, oh no problem yes. no, and, and even with my best friends you know early on in our relationship we had to agree to disagree and it's just not well, a topic yeah, that I mean, you can we don't, mike and i have worked together very well we're able to accomplish some cool stuff. And there are fundamental things about this universe that we don't agree on. And the guy with the book beat me to it, but I got Robert to sign it. Would you sign my badge? Yeah. Yeah, we can do that. I even have a pen. Can I sign it up? Sure, over here. Uh, I have two quick questions and then one for both of you. Now this, the first two are for so Jerry. Three, so three questions. Three questions, but the two, first two are quick. Uh, the first one would be Jerry. Uh, last year I got to rock out with you at the Proto Man concert in the front row. Oh, it was awesome, right? It was great. Are you going to be uh, at the front again for the concert today? or? Uh... Yeah, I should be. My wife is coming in around five or so, um, but I should be here for most of the concerts because I, I have to introduce. Thank you very much. I have to introduce uh, Metroid Metal, so I'll be, I'll be around. Awesome. Uh, uh, another yeah, know, right? quick question for Jerry. Uh, any chance we could get you to bust out some of the rhymes from the Blamimation you did? Uh... <laughs> the Blamimation? Yeah, that was good. I can try. Be great. Just the rhyme part? Sure. Yeah. Okay. God, this is so hard. <laughs> um, God, it's like who doesn't want to be a rapper? <laughs> Every person. No, you want to deep down. Don't give me that. <laughs> uh, Anthrax did that song. Wait. Anyway. Um, oh no, I couldn't. I couldn't possibly. Oh. Oh, it's really oh. vulgar. Yeah, it's incredibly vulgar. Are you sure? Yeah, it's super sure. vulgar. I think, the, yeah. I think the reason that you like it is because you don't know what the words are. <laughs> I'd literally talk about the prostate. It's okay. All right, cover the, cover the children's. Constrict them. 
when I'm prostate, my prostate's pumping fluid. Tentacles, tentacle shit, sex, druid, extruded, coming out of the dye, it's raw steel. Question the report of your eyes, but it's all real. Crisp like Lyman, wise like Saliman. Spit that frangible shit that splits the hymen. What was it? <laughs> Best to sequester Hester when I'm rhyming. Wanna see the top of the charts I'm climbing? Wanna see my terrible parts? We'll climb into the reverse of a penis, my genus. Something sinister, a moist cavern of wyverns with burst blisters. <laughs> Sample this mandible. Cannibal grip like clister, Mr. Non-Euclidean sex, the dick ballista. <laughs> Beasts of living saliva, unaccountable, teeth beyond counting, terror insurmountable, fitting to deliver a charge that's ungroundable, flavor past the bounds of the set, bountiful, yeah. <laughs> I forgot what it was at several points, and I had to come back. The dick ballista? <laughs> the dick ballista? <laughs> My last, uh, my last real quick question. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, not really quick, but given yeah. the whole Dick Wolves controversy that went on. It's um, true, there was one. There was. Uh, <laughs> um, has it changed your, uh, how you guys created all? Have you guys had to think about stuff like that, like who you might offend, or has it just kind of been business as usual? Or, or um, what are your thoughts around that? I think that it's fair to say that immediately after it, we definitely were a little gun shy. Um, and I feel like we resolved that. Yeah, I mean, I think that, I think that the key learning for us was that yeah, we have to make this work. I think that where things went off the rails was responding to controversy created by the strip. I think that we should have just been professional enough to let the work speak and not come and try to contextualize it for people. You know what I mean? I think that we should have just left it alone. I think that's on us. So. Yeah, I mean, I think we're definitely back to making horrible, like, comics. horrible, horrible comics. <laughs> uh, and that won't change. But that's, that's our perspective on that, yeah. <clears throat> Hi, my my yep. first pax was uh, back in '09 with the pig flu. Oh yeah. oh yeah, the pox as the they po say. The pox, the pax pox, and I was really surprised how different you guys look from your alter egos, Gabe and Tycho. Oh what yeah. What are you talking about? I'm an incredible artist. <laughs> I have captured our likenesses. And I was just curious how you guys came up with uh, your alter egos. Fire away. Uh, I just drew two guys about 13 years ago, um, and been using them ever since. I really put no effort or thought into it. Uh, now, well, no, because it was midnight, right? You had yeah, to make a like comic midnight. for the next day. Um, now, it's not to say that over the course of these 13 years, I haven't tried to evolve them into being actually like good characters, like good character designs. But in, originally, no, I did, there was no thought. And I remember all. like eight years ago, you were like, I've got it. I'll give each of them a different jaw shape. Yeah, for a while they had the same head shape. I mean. Look at I, the very in, early ones, it's amazing. Yeah, in fact, in the anniversary book, I did a whole, I don't know if you have it, but there's a whole series where I took the art from you know, the very beginning to now and talked about why I made each change. So. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hi, that, guys. Uh, thank you. This is my very first PAX. Oh, I'm so glad um, you're here. <laughs> thank you. Um, See? Love. It's present. <laughs> I have a, a quick question and yes. then a, a bit longer of a question. The first quick question is, will we ever see Cheeto again? Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> Cheeto is part of continuity, <laughs> which, we, which is something we take very seriously. <laughs> Back to continuity. And, um, uh, yeah, I mean, any, anytime, we, anytime we reach in and start dealing with D&D uh, &D type stuff and that, and that sort of crew that Tycho has in the strip, Cheeto always makes an appearance. Motherfucker loves Cheetos. <laughs> That's what I say. And uh, the second question, does it ever just hit you guys that, you know, you're just two people who made comics 13 years ago, and now here you are with a multi-million dollar business and two conventions and just kind of stop. I mean, your lives have basically been a Bioware RPG. <laughs> <laughs> You've got loot. <laughs> Five discs. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it's, in, it's incredible. I mean, typically the way we think about it is that is not to not to keep that idea present in our heads too long because we feel like there's a magical element to the whole thing and we feel like that it's it's like if you look at it it's like oh don't take off the red string or your head will fall off you know what i mean like we, we, we're getting back into some rich folklore you know, i don't know that one it's a story yeah if she has a red string don't pull it just leave it on yeah and I just wanted to add that, Mike, your artwork is the artwork that I base my judgment of all web comics on. Oh, wow. So uh, I have a pretty high standard. Thank you very much. That's very nice. Thank you. What's up, man? Uh, 
Yeah, hi. Uh, well, that guy's just thanking Mike for his artwork will make mine. He stole that easier. from you. <laughs> uh, no, actually, I'm going to do something that will alienate Mike a bit again. Oh, like, awesome. Uh, <laughs> I started reading Penny Arcade when I was 11 years old. Holy shit. Uh, right, right at the beginning. I'm, tw I'm 23 now. I what? I still remember the oval logo that you had to start <laughs> The writing. pennies? Yeah. Did you see yeah. that logo with I, the pennies in there? The one with we the pennies. We thought that was really cool because yeah. it's like Penny Arcade. Yeah. <laughs> it's so clever at the time. Uh, but over 11 years, I, a very rough time for me personally, obviously, going through the normal stuff. Also, some other stuff won't get into yeah. that, obviously. I found being young very difficult. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but specifically, I, th through you, through your writing styles, grand uh, uh, Tyconian hyperbole. Uh, I am that, so happy. That <laughs> I have I embraced could. and adopted, and everyone I know will tell you that I speak pretty much like Tycho, uh, or the news post more accurately, but that inspired me to sort of pursue my talents as a writer. Uh, I could so, not be more proud. So I- Go give your son a hug. <laughs> le leading, leading up to this, uh, I, I wanna know, I mean, cause really you were my primary inspiration. I can't believe this is happening. Uh, <laughs> what, who, who were your inspirations in writing? Obviously it, didn't come out of nowhere. You got great talent. And... Save me. <laughs> Mike Krahulik. No. Well, there you go. Um, uh, that's actually pretty easy. Mark Twain. Yeah. Um, H.P. Lovecraft. Yeah. And Neil Stevenson. Yeah. Um, and William Gibson as well. Those are, I try to uh, at first, I was like, you know, why make my own style? There's these incredible writers. I should just write like a combination of them. And it's worked very well for me. Well, well, you, you seem to have come up with that. Uh, the, again, the grand hyperbole. Yeah. Well, it's because I want to live. Like I want to live. I want to live an epic, amazing life. And I felt like if I just described it that way, maybe it would happen. Well, yeah, I mean, I took my online screen name from the title of your second book, uh, Magic Sword King, and <laughs> built a legend around myself <laughs> in that image. But this is exactly uh, what Jane was talking about. This yeah, idea of a yeah. self-conception that is true and is, a, it is capable. But, yeah, also, I did, I did want to point out... Do you out know this horse person? I was looking at him, I was wondering throughout the entire time that I've been in line, will I get to the mic before or after Horseman? You lost. <laughs> you lost, horse guy. <laughs> no carrots for you. You scared the shit out of me. <laughs> oh, did you not know? I didn't, I just looked at him and was like, oh, what the fuck, a horse man? I have not been able to avert my <laughs> eyes from him for 15 minutes now. Okay. Uh, also, I, I'm not from a faraway foreign land. I'm from Washington, D.C. But nonetheless, uh, we have these things there uh, that have uh, Money? Uh, our uh, little uh, first president there named Washington, yeah. namesake of our city. Maybe you've heard of him. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I'm from Washington State. Yeah. Oh, of course. We're like brothers. Yes, like, from separate cuss. But I do have two of them. If you would both like a dollar. You just wanna, just wanna give us a dollar? I felt a little left out to everyone Yeah, I feel like I should be shaking presents. it for you. I... You don't have to give us any money. It's okay. I paid for the best. We give what we give you freely. <laughs> All right, thank you very thank much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, now talk to your horrible nightmare horse person. <laughs> ah! It's even worse when the head comes off. That's not very nice. No, I don't mean his face. I'm saying to pull a head off. <laughs> Your face is fine. Thank you. I like it's it. Actually, it's actually sweltering. Oh, but, um, well, I can only imagine. A couple of years ago, I had the fortune to meet um, Tracy Brown. And uh, when I came to PAX East last year, I saw they had Get In Line games and all the lines. And oh, then, yeah, amazing. And then last year, you did the thing with D&D &D and voting. 
And uh, I was wondering if you're going to have any stuff uh, from her like at this PAX or at future PAXs. I, I think we might have her at, some, at, at future PAXs because the work they do is so amazing. Um, but we don't have her set up this year. Uh, it might have been a conflict or something like that. But I think that people really enjoy the stuff they do for the line. Yeah, it's awesome. Hey, uh, I have one more question. Um, you know, if you're not going to finish that uh, iron brew, I can like take it off your hand. I'm still learning about the iron brew. Okay, all right, that's fine. <laughs> Sir. Hi, uh, my name is Paul, and this is my first PAX, actually my first large convention. Oh, hi, Paul. Wow. Uh, coming in from oh, Pittsburgh right. CMU, in case anyone else is from that area. Yeah. And I, my question was, I assume you're familiar with uh, Avatar Last Airbender. Yeah. <laughs> what bending style would you want? Oh, wow. And why? And what do you think the other would have? I would, I would probably choose Earth. Just because I love Toph, yeah, so much. <laughs> Best character ever. Yeah. He took mine. No, you would be a firebender uh, because you are so mean, <laughs> and, and you say such hurtful things all the time. I'll take it. Okay. Awesome. Thanks. Uh, hi. Uh, Chris Hastings of Dr. McNinja just announced that he's writing Deadpool. Oh, so, yeah, I saw wow. that. Wow. Yeah. That's so, awesome. That's pretty perfect. amazing. Yeah. And my question is, have you guys ever approached or been approached by DC or Marvel? And if you could, what comics would you write? <laughs> yeah, we have a hard enough time writing our own yeah. shit. Um, yeah, I mean, we tend to you know, we tend to focus on stuff. I mean, we definitely had offers to take something that we've done, like Lookouts or Automata, mm. and do a monthly book. But it, it's just a time thing. Like, it's just it's so difficult to scratch together the time. Do you mean like a like um like it, what, what in, official in the books? dream world where you if had infinite Marvel came time. to us or DC or whatever? Man, I think we could do I think we could do Hellified, um, Knights of the Old Republic shit. Oh yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I, yeah, I think, that, would be, I think, that would be a dream to draw too. Like a Star Wars comic would be. I, we, we've we've great. had that fantasy when we were with Dark Horse. We had that fantasy that we would like take over a monthly book and. <laughs> <laughs> we have fantasies. Yeah. And uh, one last quick question. Yeah. Uh, this is for my friend Leonard. Actually, are you going to be playing D and D? And is there any way he could play with you this weekend? Uh, I definitely plan on playing D and D, but I have no idea when I'll be able to get down there. Um, so it's not like I can say I'll be here at this time. Uh, yeah, I'll just be like a wild right. Gabe has appeared, and then yeah, I'll be yeah. there. <laughs> All right. well, thanks a lot. That's yeah. Okay. Sir, howdy. Uh, two. Quick I will questions. Twitter before I go down there. Yeah. Uh, two quick questions. One's for the gentleman who was behind me. What is the swear word for PAX 2011 East? Oh, oh good man. <laughs> well, technically, yeah, I guess fiddlesticks has been suggested. It's not, you know. Leave it to the professionals, please. Come on. Do we have any good ones recently? Yeah. Let's let's keep that one. Let's keep our powder dry on that one. <laughs> um, so we need we need a swear word. Yeah. Does it, does it have to be a real swear word? No. Um, I'm trying to think of all the stuff I've called you recently. <laughs> Cock is a good prefix, but it's also a good suffix. Uh, <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> oh, hominid. Hominid's good. <laughs> I do say one all the time. What do we think of a shuttlecock? I don't like that one. Okay, well then, what, what's your suggestion? That's classic. <laughs> it's if it's, traditional. It's elegant. What do you think? Didn't we have one with spit in it for a while? I thought you had one with spit, with the word spit in it. <laughs> Try vag. <laughs> what? Who said that? One's funny. Stand up. That You're is horrible. Villain. You win. <laughs> trying to imagine it right now. It's kind of cool. I don't know. Yeah. Did you already do the, the one? Which one? I have a lot of ones that start with cunt. <laughs> no. 
That's not a real thing. <clears throat> That's a bad one. It, yeah. Do you want a bad one? Yeah. <laughs> yes. I think it's a bad. I think it's good though. No, you say it. It's not, I didn't make it up. Um. <laughs> no, I had a worse one. Oh. Um. What? What's up? Oh no, I don't know what's happening over there. Um. <laughs> slip moist. Oh. Woo! Pretty good. It's pretty roast, right? Pretty good. You asked for it. It's not on me. All right, and then my, uh, my other question. At uh, PAX Prime, you announced the, the trenches. Oh, yes. Uh, what's going to be coming up at? It's going to uh, come out yeah, on the we, web. We have a writing session for it every Wednesday. And I think we've written nine, nine or ten strips so far. Uh, once we feel like we have enough of a backlog, we'll go ahead and launch it. Yeah, um, but the... Erica did a rad design. I mean, it's yeah, site's ready. We just have to. We just want to make sure that we have enough. It's just so weird. Like after having done a comic for so long, it's like starting a new comic for some reason feels weird. I don't know why yeah. it would be, but um, yeah, let's just you overthink it, I guess. Cool. Looking forward to it. Thanks. Thank you. Hi. Hi. I gotta follow Slip Moist with food. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Edibility factor has been right. diminished. <laughs> So uh, we got uh, three questions. Yeah. Kay. Pretty quick, but they all involve food. Okay. Kay. First off, uh, Mike. Yep. Last night when you were at a restaurant. Yes. Someone offered you donuts. Yeah. That was my girlfriend. I saw her. Yes. These are the donuts. Yeah. I told you to come see me at my Q and A. And here we are. <laughs> it worked. Uh, these are Foss Knots. They're from Lancaster County. They're uh, like donuts. Fosnots thing. Fosnots. 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 When you German. say like a donut, I mean I, I don't understand. Well, like, well, they're like donuts, but they're boring. Okay. Okay. So you're not really selling it. I know. I know. <laughs> Second question: Would you? Are you content with just boring donuts? Who is? I mean, is anyone content I'm, with? No. I don't think so. So butterscotch crimpets from Tasty Cake. Okay, Tasty Cake. Okay, now we're moving in the right direction. Yes, uh, I right. like where this is going. Yep. So do you put the Tasty Cake on top of the other thing, and then, <laughs> it, or maybe a Tasty Cake on each side? It's, it's your food. You can okay, do whatever you want with it. We can configure it. Okay, third. Third question. To make up for the low-quality Pennsylvania Dutch treat, <laughs> high-quality Pennsylvania Dutch treat, whoopie pies. Whoopie pie? Whoopie pies. Are you familiar with Oreo Cakesters? Yeah. yeah. They're a vile abomination compared to these. <laughs> Bring that up here. I will. A you whoopie. We don't have whoopie pies. No, no, no. That's not, that's not a thing we have. Well, we're going to have to find out. Holy fuck. It's like a sandwich? He's been born anew. It's fucking incredible. <laughs> that tastes so good. He needs a moment to be alone. No, no. Do you need a moment to be alone with your... <laughs> I think that that is the last question from both lines. Which means... It's true. Which means it is time for me to welcome you to PAX 2011. Enjoy the show. I'll see you around. Peace outside. <laughs>